Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today we'll be discussing the return of Matt Chandler. So we'll be watching Matt Chandler's announcement and return thereof. And this is a very bizarre story because Matt Chandler was ousted temporarily from the pastorate for doing something that wasn't categorized as a sin. It was believed to be above reproach, but not fully above reproach. It's a very weird instance in the way that they word it. The key word that they used was disorienting. Uh, it appears that Matt Chandler was having a DM relationship with a woman that wasn't his wife. But the weird thing is that everyone knew about this relationship. Like Matt Chandler's wife knew about this relationship. This other woman's husband knew about this relationship. This other woman wasn't even a complainant in the matter. It was like some busybody friend of hers that thought it was an inappropriate relationship. And Preston Sprinkle has come out, and he's a uh, side B theologist who's friends with Matt Chandler and has Matt Chandler speaking at one of his conferences. And, you know, I guess the stave off pushback that he was getting, he basically came out and said that Matt Chandler was ousted for violating the Billy Graham rule, which is not in the Bible. However, wise it might be, it is not a reproach to violate the Billy Graham rule rule that's just that's an abuse of authority uh the elders at the village church greatly abused their authority they had no authority or they had no grounds to oust matt chandler they violated you know first corinthians 5 by going to a pagan law firm uh to sort out the matter like they they hired pagans to interpret the dms to diagnose whether they are appropriate or not rather than making moral judgments themselves as a church which is the church has a higher authority on making moral judgments than a pagan law firm but hiring pagan law firms to do investigations is just par for the course in uh, the southern baptist convention so we're going to go through this video don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new as we dive on in I know um, that, the, that the Christian life's a bit of a marathon. Um, sometimes you're running uphill and sometimes you're running downhill. Sometimes it's snowing and sometimes it's sunny. Um, and if my foolishness um, thank you, created any additional weight or hardship for you, um, man, please forgive me. Um, I said back on the 28th that um, August I was really 28th. disoriented um, when this happened because I didn't understand how it happened. I mean, I'm a, I'm a man who guards his life and doctrine fairly closely. And so I was disoriented by the fact that, um, meant one, that the accusation came. And then um, I was confused by even some of the things that progressed after that. And um, I, I do think um, that it revealed some unhealth in me that was a, a blind spot that, that I just couldn't see. And... Um, and so I'm, I, I couldn't be m more grateful um, that the elders are, look, there are three things um, to the man. Um, they love the word of God ferociously. They love Jesus Christ deeply, and they love me and my family. Um, and we have felt that through this whole ordeal. Um, this is at 1.25 so there's, there's no, speed, no, I mean, I, I hear the whispers. That there's no beef between us and the elders. I don't know what you think about their play. I agreed with it. I, I'm grateful that they love this church. They love Jesus. They love the one. They love us enough. That they're driven by conviction enough um, to, to model what, what needed to be modeled here. And so um, if, if I caused any burden, I'm so sorry. And, and then I want to thank the elders, and I want to thank Summer and Exec, and I want to thank uh, the staff that had to carry a, a significant load um, be, because of the work I was doing. The elders asked me to do um, two intensives. And, um, and that was a nice little humble brag. You know, they had to carry the load, you know, just implying how much of a load bearing structure that Matt Chandler is on the chairs. So that was a little humble brag there. But, and then a neurological yeah. exam, and then uh, which if you don't know my backstory, we, we probably needed to do that, right? I, I don't have a right frontal lobe. Um, if you remember that back in 09, um, if you're a guest, I had brain cancer. And they had to 
do some surgery and some, and man, I, I think that that process has given me insight into exactly what happened. Um, so that I don't have to be anxious about that or nervous about that. And I think in time, uh, I'll share more. I don't have like six key learnings for you this morning. I just feel like fresh out of surgery. So um, I feel tender and um, alive to the Lord and grateful to be back with you. And uh, again, I, I think for, for all the talking points that may or may not need to happen this morning, I think my heart is, I'm sorry. Like I, I, I failed you and I know you love me and I know you're so, and I, I appreciate so, you've so been the grace of God to us tangibly. So thank you for that. But I'm sorry. Um, for any burdens I've caused or difficulties that my um, foolishness kind of brought about in your own journey with the Lord. And I'm so thankful um, for you and for these elders and for our staff. And um, he, like the Lord met us and he, and he carried us through. And I don't want to lose sight of that. I don't want to lose like, like chances of your stuff ever being made public and making salon um, is probably slim. And, and yet the Lord's going to be serious about your heart and to pursue the depths of who you are because he loves you. Talk about uh, and the more we magazine. can submit and bow to King Jesus, um, the more health, vibrancy, and wholeness is available to us. And so here in a second, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to turn it back over to Josh, but um, I, I did want to, I knew, I mean, I, I've known like today was going to be all eyes on me. And if you've been here for 20 years, you know how much I hate that. And so I'm eager for us. Um, you, you don't leave this behind. This now is a part of our story, right? So I'm like, okay, let's What's keep it. No, no, we're story. a whole new place now. I don't even know what that means yet, but we're going to find out together. So I'm eager for that. And so I'm sorry. Thank you. I do love you more than you know I do. So. Yeah. So before this, you know, a lot of headlines circulated about how Matt Chandler was greeted by a standing ovation. We skipped the standing ovation because there's no point in watching clapping seals. Uh, I'm not really into doing that, but... It, it, it's strange, like, you know, it kind of comes across as a hostage video. He's praising his hostage holders. A little bit of Stockholm Syndrome going on. You know, like, they kind of took him out back to the woodshed, and, you know, and now he's just singing their praises now. I don't know. That's kind of the vibe I get, and, you know, they told him to play it up and something like that. And, you know, he's, he's a more theatrical or thespian preacher than, you know, I would like. Uh, him... Francis Chan and David Platt are all a little too thespian for me. But, and that's a nice way to put it. But, uh, I don't know. There's something about that that seems a little disingenuous, but it, it just is weird because, again, the words sin are not used to describe this entire ideal. They instead use foolishness. They talked about how disorienting it was a blind spot, but they never use the word sin. And this is, a, you know, the church is like, this is part of our story now. Matt Chandler, like, this is, this whole incident's part of our story. Is like, what incident? What incident is part of your story? And they don't really want to answer that. So another thing to point out and to highlight in our coverage of this story because this is, you know, the cap on the story, basically, is the return of Matt Chandler after being ousted and the violations of scripture that the elders did. And, of course, Preston Sprinkle basically saying what it was. And the, I guess the cherry on top is just the coverage of this. You got the Julie Royces of the world just reeing all over the place about Matt Chandler's return, saying that, you know, he should have been permanently disqualified for something that wasn't a reproach. I'm sorry, coarse jesting, which again, Pixar didn't happen. That's my rule. Uh, you know, show us how coarse it was, or at least say what it was, like, you know, in quotes verbatim. But that's not what they did. They just alluded to it. And again, the joking wasn't about sex. Uh, but apparently, you know, the leading, I, I believe, uh, again, from Preston Sprinkle was the course joking was about alcohol. So, but course just means unrefined, like, you know, rocks or, uh, and stuff like that. So it's a little hard to judge what they meant by that when they said that, but again, where's the reproach and they just, the, the elders at the village church just abuse their authority. Um, maybe there's some sort of power struggle. And they just asserted their dominance over Matt Chandler, which might not have been that hard to do. Who knows? But anyway, this is a bizarre story, and Matt Chandler is putting it behind him. And again, 
you know, just for the record, I do think Matt Chandler is a false teacher. I do think that. However, the precedent that this story risks setting is that good pastors will be ousted for things that are not reproach. And that's a problem that we don't want to see in the church. We don't want to see good pastors get the treatment that Matt Chandler got. Even if Matt Chandler is the most deserving in our eyes of this type of treatment, it's still not right. That's not how we do it. So, uh, you don't want to see good pastors get removed for things that weren't sin. And I don't even want to see bad pastors get removed for this type of crap. Matt Chandler should be removed for his theology and preaching. He should not be removed because he was telling a joke to some lady on Instagram DMs. Like, that's not why he should be removed. So, anyway, if you like this kind of content, evangelicaldarkweb.org is a place you can go to support this type of content. Uh, we have a Patreon-like system. You know, you can support us for as little as $5 a month. Uh, that's all linked in the description below. Have a blessed day. Let me know what you think about what I think, and we will catch you on the next one.